Hello, my name is Mike Spadafora, and I'm a systems programmer with Control Concepts. Today I'm going to walk you through a typical setup of the Crestron module we created to control the Clock Audio CDT100, the TIM1000, and the C303D. If you're watching this video, I assume you already have a basic understanding of what these products do and how they function. We're going to dive right into the Crestron programming and hopefully give you a basic understanding of what we can do with the module. This module can control a large portion of the functions these products have to offer, but today we're going to walk through a simple setup of a CDT100 equipped with four TS005 capacitive touch switch LED rings you would typically see underneath table microphones. We'll be setting up the CDT100 to communicate through our Crestron program with a Biamp Tessera Forte VI to allow individual microphone muting functions with feedback from the Tessera activating certain colors of the TS005 LEDs depending on the mute state. Let's get started. As you can see, I've already added in the Clock Audio CDT100 MK2 module into the program, along with the Biamp Tessera command processor module and four Biamp Tessera state control modules so we can control the mute block in our Tessera program. I've went ahead and set up the Tessera module so it will work with our program, so all we have to do here is get our CDT100 module set up and link some signals from this module to the Tessera state control modules. First, we want to make sure we set up our communication settings for the CDT100, so we'll go ahead and type in the IP address of our device. When the module is added in, the IP port parameter will already be set with the default port used to control clock audio devices. And since we're using a Crestron CP3 processor equipped with only a LAN network interface card, we're going to keep the adapter type parameter set to LAN. Other available options in the adapter type parameter can be chosen depending on how your processor is connected to the network where your clock audio devices live. For instance, if I'm using a CP3N processor with its control subnet port hooked up to the AV LAN, I would choose the control subnet option as my adapter type. If I'm using a Pro 3 with an additional LAN card installed and connected to the AV network, I would choose the LAN 2 option as my adapter type. This parameter is extremely important when setting up the module as it determines how the processor will communicate with your clock audio devices. Once the program starts, the module will automatically establish communication and attempt initialization. So next, we're going to add in the digital output signals that indicate the module has successfully established that communication with our device and it initialized. If one or both of these signals doesn't go high after the program has been loaded, I recommend making sure our parameters are set correctly and that our devices are set up properly to be able to talk to each other. I've already tied these signal names to the X panel that we will be using for testing out our program. Now that we have the core of the module set up, let's start defining our digital output signals that indicate a press has been detected on our TS005 touch LED rings. These are going to be tied to the state toggle digital inputs on our Biamp Tessera state control modules to individually mute whichever microphone has been pressed. While we set up the signals for the presses, let's also set up the feedback of the Biamp state control modules to be connected to the digital inputs on the CDT100 module that change the colors of the TS005 LED rings. I decided to use the words mute and unmute in my naming convention because when the microphone is muted, we want to turn the red LEDs on and simultaneously turn the green LEDs off, and vice versa when the microphone is unmuted. Finally, we can go back to our CDT100 module and connect the signals that control the LEDs. I'm also going to tie the LED feedback digital outputs to our X panel for testing purposes. Now that it looks like everything is connected as it should be, let's compile the program and make sure we don't have any errors. Once everything looks good, let's upload and test our system. For testing purposes, I created a typical Biamp to Sarah configuration set up with a 4-channel mute block that we are controlling from our Crestron program. I also made an X-Panel UI to emulate the presses that we set up on the CDT100 module and to provide feedback from the module and device when the LED for a specific channel is changed. As you can see, when we press the switch, the desired channel in the Tessera configuration toggles the mute state and in turn sets the color of the LED accordingly. While this is a pretty simple example of how to utilize this module, I encourage you to get creative and see what else you can do. Personally, I like to offer clients the ability to tap the TS005 for individual microphone muting, but when any TS005 is pressed and held for a certain amount of time, it triggers a global mute or unmute. There are so many possibilities and hopefully this video gave you a good starting point to see what the module is capable of. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and look forward to the next one. Happy programming!